about. I am curious. I know you're a huge Warren Zevon fan, so I'd love to know some of your thoughts and what and what points you found interesting that you wanted to discuss. Oh well, you know, the, the interesting thing with you today for me, um, I used to interview authors all the time for yet another radio show that I did, and I always cool. found that. That was a lot of fun for me. That was my creative nonfiction, but it was audio creative nonfiction. Yeah, no, I and, get it. It's, it's essay yeah. style. And yeah. so, you know, I, um, for a lot of people, I, I took copious notes. I mean, for Aldrich, I, I took notes. And, and for um, Danny Goldberg, I, I took a lot of notes. I have them in front of me. But what happened with, with Danny Goldberg, like I said, was he just sort of started. He was just ready. Yeah. And he went, and then I promised him initially that I wasn't going to keep him more than a half an hour because he, re he, re you know, he requested not more than a half an hour. So I was totally cool with it. I wanted some yeah. good stuff to put into the podcast. What wound up happening was I barely said a word. I barely asked a question. All the, all the questions that I had, had ready, he answered without so much input from me, which was kind of cool because that's the way I'm putting this interview together, this whole Warren Zevon project together. For the most part- It probably part, helped the, the narrative style that you're taking. Yeah. The narrative, uh, it, it took care of itself. See, generally I don't make shows like the Warren Zevon. I, I don't make shows like thought, part one was. Yeah. There, it's mostly conversation mixed with, with music uh, and usually live music. People come over and perform, which is great. But- um, I had a friend who, who was in radio longer, way longer than me, uh, and suggested, and he wasn't suggesting it about the Warren Zevon interview. He was just in general saying, why don't you try to sound like uh, such and such? Uh, keep, your, keep yourself to yourself and let your guests be the first voice. And that's not what I do usually. And I thought for, in this case, since we're dealing with a party who can't be here, I will give that a try i i this show oh, i like that you opened part one with george oh yeah i oh, that, was that was awesome great. that was so, great that was a great quote to open with thank you thank you i was wondering if i I'd, I'd put too much of it in there or not i i, I still want no, it was good it opened with an anecdote it was yeah. that was great but uh you know that's that's not usually me so hearing that it worked is gratifying thank you and and when this show gets picked up i mean i create this as a podcast but it gets picked up by public radio stations when i'm really lucky um it gets broadcast on npr stations so oh, i can't wait to hear this when it's all done just because i enjoyed the first part so much thanks thanks i appreciate that and and i uh i did bow to the format of more of a P pbs style than than just a a radio style or am or or public radio style i i i bowed to strictly a well strictly i i bowed to the pbs style in this case just to see if it would work and it was my most listened to podcast ever so i mean it must, that's awesome it, it must have been very cool but whenever i share a zevon song on on my facebook page or what have you i want it to be something different i mean i know he's known for a bunch of a handful by the general public, he's known for a handful of almost pop novelty songs. Um, I know. And, and it's so much deeper than that. And I'm always telling people, well, you know, well, uh, you know, what I'm confronted with, well, I don't like Werewolves of London, or I've heard that enough. It's like, well, there are a bunch of albums that you probably haven't heard then. And on those albums, there's probably a few songs that you'll really like because they are literary yeah. or, or they are, uh, you know, full of imagery or they are full of um, angst or anger or even I started the podcast with a song that probably the first part, part one, probably nobody, uh, especially a Warren Zevon fan would not expect. Who's searching for a heart. And I started it. I love that. Because, great song. I, because everything that I've read is, he wanted to find somebody to love him. At least yeah. that's the way it seemed. I mean, I don't know him. I didn't know him. I saw him in concert a bunch, but I, I you know, it's not like I know nice. him. Oh, and I wish I'd seen him live. <laughs> and uh, I, you know, I thought this is perfect. Be to me, it was perfect because nobody will know it. Nobody will, will realize that, you know, that's the same excitable boy. 
it speaks to him wanting to find somebody to be with. I mean, he's always, he was always getting engaged. He was always trying to find a woman, not, not necessarily an easy lay every time. He was trying to find somebody to spend a life with. It was just at early, in the early days, he couldn't do it. He was incapable yeah. of that. And um, I think by the, by the end, maybe he was capable of it, but the people he was meeting, like, I don't know, and I, forgive me if I'm pr pronouncing this wrong, uh, I, yeah. I don't know anything about Ryan Rayston. Mm -hmm. She's very cool. Well, they were, they, end, they dated very, very briefly. And but they're, it became best, but a they're very best deep, buddies, yeah. That's what it ended up being. And I thought it was fascinating to me because when Warren was a teenager, um, you know, the girl from Lyman Sabell, Laura, who, who, who went to high school with him, his first folk duo, he wanted to date her and they ended up being like brother and sister. And it was a very deep platonic relationship. It was a profound one. And then all of a sudden bookending his life, he had the, an identical, you know, relationship with Ryan, who's a writer. Mm. And it was, it was like, she ended up being like a kid sister who was with him at the end that his, his most profound relationships ended up being the platonic ones. He and Crystal ended up getting divorced, but they stayed friends for the rest of his life. I love he the seemed fact to work better with the friend stuff. He did. You know? He did. I mean, you can, yeah. you can read into all that stuff uh, in through the various books that I've read. And, and even, I guess, to a lesser extent in, in songs, because like I, I said to somebody once there was in his music, there was introspection, but there was yeah. not always necessarily quiet introspection. There was always, it was, it could have been more on the edge or it could have been more deliberately angry or sarcastic but mm -hmm. if you could see through that at the heart of it to me at the heart of it it was well he's searching for a heart and so i started with that and i i questioned myself i can't tell you how many times i questioned myself using that as the lead track